Hello, uh, welcome back to another lecture. Uh, we're going to go ahead and continue with the uh, load and load path, and this time it's going to be uh, wind load. I have the problem on the screen, and uh, we're going to basically what we're going to do we're going to follow the uh, ASCE uh, code uh, and uh, step and procedure to calculate the uh, wind load. Look at the chapter 26 and the wind load design requirement. You take a look at 26.1, it says building and other structure including the main wind force resistance system, MWFRS, that's what we're going to use, and other components that shall be following this chapter. If we go further down on chapter 26, they have this procedure to follow, and then they have this uh, uh, diagram, and uh, finally uh, follow different chapters. So wind load on an MWFRS may be determined by chapter 27 or 28. We're going to go ahead and use chapter 27. So let's, let's go back to our uh, original problem. Uh, right here we have this building and it says uh, find the design wind pressure on MWFRS in both direction uh, and uh, uh, using part 1 chapter 27 ACE directional procedure for building of all height. Assume the walls are reinforced concrete and we have the wall is 20 feet high and it's the our building is 256 by 148 feet. This is the same problem like we did with the snow in the same area uh, located exactly the same thing. So it's in St. Louis, Missouri. If we go to chapter 27 on uh, ASCE wind load and we're going to go ahead and follow this procedure table 27.2.1 and it shows a step to determine the WMUR uh, W sorry MWFRS wind load for enclosed partially enclosed and open building of all height so there are seven steps here and we're going to follow by the seven step and going back to our problem First, we want to find out what is the risk category of the building or other structure, and that's our first step. It's going to be, and we're going to go ahead and look at the uh, our building, which was uh, in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, now we're going to look at the uh, these steps. Step one says find out the risk category of the building or other structure. So we're going to go to table fifteen one and table fifteen. Uh, I mean one point five one. Our table 1.51 is a risk category. Our risk category says all building and other structure except those listed in the risk category are 1, 3, and 5. This one, if you read all the stuff, our building risk category uh, classified as uh, uh, class 2. Uh, before you start, uh, go ahead and open up an Excel spreadsheet and you can do everything on the Excel sheet here. And so we did step 1. Step 1 is going to be risk category 2. And let's go see what is a step number two is. Step number two uh, is um, uh, find the basic wind speed uh, for the location that we're looking for. And wind speed normally is uh, uh, if we have, uh, you can find this map on ACE and look at, look, find a location and find your wind speed or local code is pretty good really. For example, this one is Massachusetts, it's in 780 CMR. For every single town they have there, they have the wind speed. So you can pick up the wind speed from there. And we did the same thing, uh, both by the map and look, looked at the local uh, code. The wind speed uh, was uh, 107 miles per hour. So we're going to head to proceed to uh, step three. Step three is basically uh, it's A, B, C, D, E, F. There's a bunch of them. Step 3a says uh, find a wind directional k factor kd. Okay, and it says uh, take a look at section 26.6. 26.6. So I looked at 26.6 um, dash 1 as a building main wind force resisting system component 0.85. That's kd. Again, we go back to our Excel sheet. And we're going to have KD is uh, equal 0.85. Step 3B from the uh, code, it says exposure category. So the exposure category is uh, table 26.7. And it tells you in a code. And if we look at table 26.7, it's uh, the exposure category is C. 
and that's the uh, open terrain with the scatter obstruction having a height generally less than 30 feet so this is our explosion category and this is based on the ASC 26.7 and again we document that on our, our, on our excel sheet which becomes C then we go all right the next step is the step uh, 3c and in step 3c is asking for topographic uh, uh, factor kzt and that is in uh, ASCE 26.8 let's look at 26.8 and 26.8 is a topography effect you go through read all this stuff and uh, it's a good material and they have more information here these table when we go through all this stuff we're gonna find out our condition really doesn't mean any of this stuff so go down keep on going and there's a note down here that says if the site condition and location of the building and other structure does not meet the above condition use kzt is equal one so we're going to use kzt of one and there it is right here put one in the spreadsheet then we go to step 3d and which is a gust factor effect g and that is 6.9 uh, gust effect factor of 0.85 so we get that and we put that in our uh, excel sheet right there and the next step is uh, uh, step 3f and step 3f is uh, enclosed building so we know that and we're going to go ahead to step 3e internal pressure coefficient gcpi and gcpi it can be uh, from table 2611 Going back to the code itself, uh, 2611. Um, I get there. There we go, 2611, right here. And we're going to have uh, enclosed building. It's going to be plus or minus 0.18. That's important, plus or minus 0.18. So now let's go back to step number four. And if you remember, we already did all this. Uh, oops, that's not going to be. Uh, we did all the step in uh, 27 uh, step one st out, uh, section step 33 three. so now we're going to go ahead to step four okay this will bring us to uh, step four in uh, step four uh, it says uh, determine the velocity pressure qz and qh and those are based on uh, 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 kz uh, and kh uh, what I mean by that, if we go to table 27.31, uh, before I go there, I want to explain something here. Hold on. Um, when we have a wind blown on a building, the uh, uh, direction that the wind is blowing, the direction that the wall is, we call that windward wall. And then you have the two side wall. And then you have the opposite wall called a leeward wall. And if you look at the elevation point of view, and this is the direction that the wind blowing and the first floor normally try to use the, ta the, the the height up to here if you have a second floor it will be this height plus halfway through the uh, second floor and continue average that going above for third and fourth so our our building is only one story we're going to use uh, two elevation 15 and 20 and that's where if I look at the uh, my excel sheet uh, right here I have the windward wall leeward wall side wall and then the roof and then uh, but the height i have is 20 feet 15 and ALL basically is 20 feet and uh, because on the other side we're using those number 20 feet so if you go to table 2731 of ASCE which is uh <clears throat> right here table 2731 and i tell you the height above the ground uh, z and we're using 15 and 20 and the exposure category C which I got 0 0.85 point nine is for 20 okay then we look at the, our Excel sheet that's where you see the point nine comes in for uh, uh, for 20 and 0.85 for one and then there's rest of our KH basically which is 0 0.9 for 20 was 0 0.9 at the, as we saw that so now we have KZ so the KZ or this should be really KZ slash KH depend which way you look at it let me write that down okay and uh, now uh, that will take care of to us for step number uh, four and um, step number four right here 
and uh, then we're going to calculate QZ. So if you go back again, let's double check that what step number four was per AC. Kind of remind ourselves a little bit. All right, step number four is to calculate the uh, coefficient KZ, KE, KH. And then you go for step number five, find the velocity pressure QZ or QH. It's the, basically the same formula. And that formula comes in from, uh, um, I think I wrote it on my Excel sheet right here. And the formula is right here for it, QZ or QH. And that can be calculated from st um, ACE 27. If you know where that came from, is right here. This is it. Uh, velocity pressure QZ. And this is for uh, uh, 0 0.0025. Five six multiplied by kz, kzt, kd, v square. So we have everything except for uh, we're gonna go in our Excel sheet. We're just gonna go ahead. We found out what kzt was. We found out what kd was, and we know what v is. So when we come to our Excel sheet, uh, we see we have all those numbers right here. Kzt is equal one, and g was 0 0.85, and kd was 0 0.85. So we're gonna go ahead and calculate it, and this comes out to 24.91 time kz because kz is variable based on the height if you have a multiple floor especially so we go back and here we could write a formula for our uh right here our formula is going to be basically uh 24.9 multiplied by uh factor kzt and that's where we find qz or qh uh, this could be called qz and this could be called qh in this column proceed to the next step and the next step is um Step five, we did that. So we're gonna go ahead to step six, and it says uh, find the external pressure coefficient CP and uh, CN. Okay, and it says use uh, the table is 27.4. So let's go to uh, 27.4. When we go to 27.4, Right here, one thing we need to know, we need to want to the L over B. Okay, our L over B, that means length over the width of our building. Uh, length over building, it's going to be, uh, our building was, uh, in step number six, our building was length over B was 256 feet long, 148 feet wide. So our number comes out, L over B comes out 1.7. Okay. So now we have 1.7. Keep that in mind, and we're gonna go look at the uh, table 2741 again. So in table 2741, we have this value right here. In table 27.41, we have this uh, value, and uh, for CP, it says a. Uh, uh, windward uh, for all wall value of a windward wall is equal to 0.8 so we put that in our spreadsheet we have 0.8 right there and uh, for uh, um, leeward okay uh, leeward we have uh, this table here and uh, it says uh, for uh, 1 0 to 1 is minus 0.5 for 2 is minus 0.3 our number is between this two 1.7 so we have to interpolate and you remember how we did this uh, so let's go back to our Excel sheet I just made a full equation here this is the equation for linear interpolation right here and we said at 1 was minus 0.5 at 2 was minus 0.3 remember that that's from right here Let's go over it again. 1 is minus 0.5. 2 is minus 0.3. What is 1.7? So we go back on our Excel sheet. Okay. We got that. We got that. And 1.7, we don't know. It's going to come out to negative 0.36. How we got that is this formula right here. You can type in a formula in Excel. So you can have it. And all you have to do is put the value in here and you get it. So that's how we're going to get our value. It comes out to negative 0.36. So if you go back in here, and you can see our CP value, negative 0.36 come from here, and 0.8 came from uh, the table. 
and then for side wall, let's find where the point negative 0.7 came from. Side wall, all value negative 0.7. That's where it came from. All right. Now we're gonna go back, find a CP value for the roof. And the roof, we have three different stages. If you look at your roof, the pitch of your roof basically comes out to a 2.3 degree. So pitch of our roof is 2.3 degree. And then we go back to the code. The code says if your roof is less than 10 degree, then you can use this table here. And horizontal distance from the windward edge from 0 to H over 2. And from H over 2 to H. And from H to 2 H. Okay. The mean roof height in feet. Except the eave height and shall be used for less than 10 degree. Okay. So now we have those three different uh, uh, 0 to uh, H a half. H and a half to H. And H to 2 H. And we're going to use this value right here. And when we go back to our Excel sheet. Our roof again remember. Our roof is less than 10 degree. And H over L has to be less than 0.5. Our H over L is uh, uh, less than 0.5. Our H is 20 and our L is uh, 248. So you know that's really uh, it comes out to almost 0 0.08, which is less than 0.5 right here. And therefore, we get this number right here. So when we go back to our Excel sheet, you see we have uh, CP minus 0.9, minus 0.5, minus 0.3. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to be up here. Minus 0.9, minus 0.5, minus 0.3. And this is the value we got right here. Minus 0.9, minus 0.5, minus 0.3. And uh, once we have that, then the next thing we're going to calculate is. Okay, this will bring us to step number seven, which is calculate wind pressure P. So if you go look at the uh, code right here, uh, it said uh, step seven, equation 2741. And we go to 2741 right here. It says a uh, wind load, main wind load uh, force. And this is the equation P equal Q. G C P minus Q I times G C P I, and that can explain everything. And we can go ahead and put this in our equation. We already know Q, and we know G, and we know C P. So when we go back to the Excel sheet right here, uh, that's what we need it right here. We have the internal pressure. Uh, uh, remember, we had the G C P I was plus point one eight and minus point one eight. No, I mean point one. Yeah. I was like, so plus or minus 0.18, that's where it comes in right here. So you have a QH or QZ time uh, 0.18 positive time negative 0.18. That's what it is. One of them is plus, one of them is negative. Then you have the internal pressure and you have uh, 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 on both uh, suction and, and, uh, and, uh, and positive pressure. And you can add the net pressure also right here. If we go back to the uh, uh, Right here on this table, there's a table right here, right here. It basically tell you uh, what are these are here. See this one. So the pressure uh, from one word comes out QZ GCP. Over here comes out QH GCP. And you can go ahead and use this and for your roof also. And that's how we calculate the wind load. Okay, for your homework, what I like to see is you do the same exact problem. Instead of saying Lewis, Missouri, let's use Boston. And uh, follow the same footsteps, see what we're going to get. Thank you and have a good week.